welcome back welcome back i'm going to show you guys quickly how to add a storage device to your open media vault nas and i'm also going to show you guys on windows 11 this should work the same for windows 10 i'm assuming windows 7 and 8 as well i'm going to show you how to map that drive to your network on your windows 11 pc that means i should be able to copy stuff onto the nas and off the nas as well so let's get started The first thing you might want to do is actually go to storage here. So you're on your dashboard, you go to storage. You can either go to disks and check what you have plugged in. So I have two drives at the moment. This is my internal SSD, and this is an SSD I've connected via USB port. So I think I might have to wipe this because it's probably encrypted from the last time I tried to install Open Media Vault. So it might not work, it might not pick it up, but let's see. If I go to file systems quickly, and this is where you need to create your file system and then mount it to the system. So the if I click on the plus sign and I go to X4, right? It's not going to show me anything at the moment because I believe my drive is locked because it has stuff on there at the moment. So what I need to do, what you might need to do, go back to disks, click on the drive you want to use, and I'm going to wipe it. So I'm going to click wipe. I'm going to click confirm. I'm going to click yes. I'm going to click, uh, let's just do quick for now. That should be fine. that's now finished so i can click close on here and now that my driver is completely wiped i'm going to go back to file systems and see if i can create what i need so again from here i'm going to click create file system i'm going to go to x4 ext4 extension 4 click on the drop down here and as you can see my ssd now shows up i'm going to choose my ssd you guys might have multiple ssds or multiple hard drives depending on what you have in your system so if in your system you have multiple things plugged in be careful of the one you're choosing because if you wipe the wrong one obviously you've lost all that data so i'm going to click on my ssd here i'm going to click on save wait for this to finish again end of line perfect all done no errors came up click on close now from here it takes us straight to the mount section so you don't actually have to go back and do anything else you just need to mount the drive so now that you selected what file system should be on the drive you now need to tell the system okay go ahead and use the drive so for mount i'm going to click on that again i just need to choose the thing i just created which is the ssd there uh, if you set up email notifications which i think is a good idea if you trust the system enough it will send you emails or notifications when it gets to 85 percent capacity so when this this drive is what 200 and 32 gigabytes whatever 85 percent of that is once it gets there it will send you an email you simply put your details in here uh, of what you wanted to say you can change this value to whatever you want i'm going to leave it i don't think i need that feature i'm going to click on save and from here my drive should be good to go after i click on save i need to click on that tick at the top right hand corner see that big yellow banner at the top go to the tick click on the tick click yes and wait for this to finish and then your changes should be saved the next step is to create a shared folder so a shared folder is the folder on the drive or on the NAS that everyone or specific people will be able to access. You can set it so only specific people can do specific things, but I'm the only one who's going to be using this. I'm the only one who's going to be backing stuff up. And anyone I allow inside my house who has access to my Wi-Fi network, I, I trust them to some degree. So I need to create a shared folder. I'm probably going to call this one a mini PC share because I'm also going to do a Raspberry Pi. Same, exactly the same thing I'm doing now, but for the Raspberry Pi 5. So I'm going to click on the plus button. So let's go back one step. So let's go back to shared folders here. And on shared folders, click on the plus button here to create. And the name, I said I'm going to call it mini PC share. I'm going to select a file system. I only have one file system at the moment. So I'm going to select that one. So this is going to be the name of the shared folder or the, or, or the shared device that I can see from my Windows PC. Um, admin rights, I'm going to click read and write. Everyone read and write because, again, I'm the only person who's going to be using this. And I need to be able to read it simply means to copy stuff from it or to open files right means i can copy stuff to it and i can also create files on there so i'll show what that means later on i'm going to click on save i don't think i need to do anything else oh no spaces probably it's always the case with these things mini pc share save yep and that should be it for creating a shared folder click on the tick in the top right hand corner click on yes wait for that to finish and your shared folder should then be created we're still not done yet we're almost there i promise about two more steps to go so after we've done that we need to go to services down here and we need to go to smb cifs so smb 
when I Google it is server message block. CIFS is a common internet file system. So, so this will allow us to use or connect to this specific thing using Windows. I'm going to go to settings here. I You need to enable it first. So obviously you need to enable it to be able to use it. So I'm going to click enable. I'm going to scroll down, save, click on the tick. Yes. Wait for that to finish. Back onto services. I'm going to click on SMB. Go to share. You need to create a share now. So even though we've done all of this in the background, this, this I think there would be it would be really nice if there was at installation there was a setup process for you to go through because this seems very long-winded to me even though it's a very very good operating system and i really like what i've seen so far it seems a bit long-winded there should be at the beginning detailed descriptions asking people what you want to do do you want to set this up do you have a windows 11 pc do you have a windows 10 pc do you have an ios device an android device and set things up according to what that person wants but i understand the complexity behind this because this stuff is complex we're going to go back to services again and from services i click on smb again and this time i click on share so I'm going to create a share now. When I click on the plus button here to create, I, that's already enabled, which is fine. I need to select a shared folder. I only have one shared folder at the moment, and mine is called Mini PC Share. Again, my other one might be called Raspberry Pi Share. Click on that. Then I'm going to click on Guests Only here. So Guests Allowed and Guests Only. You only have two options. I'm going to go Guest Only. Wait for this thing to pop up. Click on the... Um, the tick click on yes wait for that to finish and i think i have a few updates as well so i might as well do those now before i connect to the windows 11 pc click on notifications here updates available i'm just gonna yeah open media oh so it's a new version of open media vault all right so it's only 2.89 megabytes i'm gonna install maybe bytes i think i'm gonna download that confirm click yes and everything else should be good updates finished and as you can see it kicked me out for a bit it's brought me back in and now pending configuration changes i'm gonna click on the plus again just to confirm i don't know what changed after i did the last one but hey might as well do it everything seems to be good to go now i'm going to show you guys how to map that specific drive that specific shared folder to my windows 11 pc if you're on a windows 10 or windows 11 pc there's a setting you need to go to call advanced sharing so i'm going to click on my start menu here i'm going to type advanced sharing again and this is why i love the start menu click on Ad manage advanced sharing settings here it's going to open up this thing here and from here you just need to tick this box once you tick this box it's going to allow for you to discover things and to also be discovered by things so i'm going to close that i'm going to go to my file explorer here sorry i need to drag this onto my second screen file explorer here once i've opened my file explorer I need to go to the dots here. So this is Windows 11. So it looks so slightly different from Windows 10. Click on the three dots. Go to map network drive. If you already have a network drive you want to disconnect, you can do it from here as well. But I'm going to map one. So I'm going to say, okay, that is where it is. Go to that location each time to find it. Map network drive. Drag this on my second screen. I'm going to put this. I like mine being, uh, let's say, network N. N drive, right? Click on browse. Click on network you don't need to click actually it's searching automatically so it starts searching as soon as you click on browse so fingers crossed it finds it my network is a bit slow so bear with me open media vault that's the only one i have on there at the moment yep and mini pc share perfect i'm going to click on open i'm going to click on finish probably going to ask me for the login details no no it didn't all right perfect so let's see what can i copy to this to test it i'm going to quickly test writing to the drive and again writing is copying something to the drive or creating a file on the drive itself so this video file I've highlighted here. This is the previous video, video number three, installing and testing um, Open Media Vault on the mini PC. It's two point something gigabytes, so it should give a good um, indication of how fast the network is. My network is not going to be great. I'm connected to my router using a switch and Wi Fi on the laptop, so it's not going to be great. So I'm going to drag and drop this onto the shared folder and let's see what speeds I get. 11 megabytes. That's horrible, horrible, horrible speeds, but hey, it's still worthwhile for me because because the point of this for me was not to have super fast backup speeds, it's to have backup in general that's local to me that I can control. So for example, there's an app on Android, I think it's called PhotoSync. I'm going to install that on my Android phone, my Android tablet, and whatever pictures I take, I can back it up to my local drive as well without having to send it to Google. That's beneficial. 11 megabytes. And again, I'm not going to be using this for videos. It's mainly going to be for pictures and I'm not going to be editing from this. I'm going to be literally dragging and dropping stuff there and leaving it until I need it again. The other thing I need to do to see if I can write to the drive. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to select new and I'm going to select a word document. Perfect. That creates it. I can open it from there directly and I should be able to edit it as well. If I drag this back across here, this is on, this was created on the network 
drive perfect that's been saved let's close that again and that is still on there perfect so let's now try copying that to my desktop just to see if it retains all its contents so i'm going to right click i'm going to go to copy right click here go to paste perfect that's been pasted double click to open yep everything's been retained oh didn't even spell that right but that's fine i think that's probably enough for open media vault on the mini pc at the moment i think what i'm going to do next is install raspberry pi os on a raspberry pi 5 install open media vault 7 on that and do the exactly the same things i've done on here for this mini pc but do it on the raspberry pi 5 instead i do have another external ssd via usb thing i can use so stay tuned for that and then after that i think i might do some power power draw um compile to see which one works best for me mini pcs in general tend to be very low powered and so do raspberry pi so i want to see over the long term which one would be best for me because again speeds aren't my major issue it's whether it works or not and if i can have it working at let's say 11 megabytes like you saw it working there for me plus being really low powered and saving me money as well then fine because i don't need to have it on all the time as well i can turn it on when i need to because it's going to be headless headless meaning it's not connected to a monitor or anything it's plugged in with the hard drive and that's it nothing else and i can turn it on back up what i need to back up turn it back off and i'm done in any case thanks for watching stay tuned